How's it going guys? Today we're going to be doing one of the most awesome tactics you can potentially do in teamfight tactics and that is we're going to try and focus our entire playstyle around items. So obviously a lot of a lot of the time a lot of people win and the game is primarily based off synergies and yeah whatever class you want to go and you know we maybe want to go a full assassin comp with void which is something I love. Maybe you want to go sorcerer, elementalist or whatever else, uh, yordle, uh, with Guardian. I don't know what you guys are, are rocking right now, but personally for me, I find it pretty much, it, it's a bit, it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of a little bit of hack in my eyes because it actually doesn't matter uh, about synergies. It doesn't matter if you go Assassin, Guardian, Brawler, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you get this item and this item is called a Zephyr. Um, right now I'm starting with Shen. I feel like Shen's a really, really good kind of base champion to start off with. Not to mention that he actually has uh, something which I need, which is a, uh, a giant spell. And giant spell is what we're going to be using to potentially get a uh, to get our Zephyr. So it honestly doesn't really matter um, what synergies you go. Uh, primarily, what you want is you just want to have a lot of kind of three. You, you get synergies. Synergies work. All right. Get assassin comp, go for a comp, go wherever you want to go. Um, but don't base your playstyle on that. Base your playstyle on getting a Zephyr first. So you want to try and get your synergies, of course. You want to try and get as as best a team as you can. But realistically for me, when I play a Zephyr kind of comp, I want to try and get uh, just as many 2-star, 3-star champions on the board as possible to potentially, uh, to potentially just pop off when I'm trading um 1v1 against other other enemies so oh babe you got a tier two graves already two star graves loving it you know what i might even just grab i might grab kazix and gasson because they're both void and maybe i'll end up doing my assassin void comp which is still in my eyes the strongest comp in the game um but yeah so the whole point about this is you have shen for me personally this is what i'm thinking i have shen right now to um yeah, to primarily just be the, the front line, tank a lot of the damage, and then I'm going to be having a really strong, hopefully, two, three star back line, uh, which is going to be like uh, assassin base, sorcerer base. I don't really know what I'm going to be going right now. Is that what. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have just gotten what we needed. We, we have a Negatron. Uh, uh, what the hell? We have a Negatron cloak. We're going to be making our Zephyr, guys. We're going to be making our Zephyr. Oh my god. I can't believe we actually... We actually got it. So early on. So this is... This is how you win. I'm going to win pretty much every single trade from now on. Until maybe significantly late game. Whenever synergies come into play. The reason this is going to work... Is you will see. I'm going to alienate one of their champions every single... Uh, every single engage. So what do you see? I'm going to probably knock up maybe Lucian here on the back line. Knock up Darius. Takes him out of the out of the mix for five seconds. Five seconds is a very long time. Gives us enough time to pop off and uh, just decimate the other people. It means also Kha'Zix gets his isolation damage, which is insane. But the reason Zephyr is so strong, guys, is because mid to late game, they're going to have a very, very even, usually comp, all right? It's usually going to be like one person is going to make the difference uh, in an engage, in a fight. And honestly, for me, a Zephyr is so strong for that alone. Because you're going to take away potentially their strongest person in the game. And they're going to be alienated and allow your uh, team to potentially pop off. That's why you do not need uh, a significant... Oh my god. You don't need a significant crazy synergy, but it helps. As you can see, it helps. It helps. Um... Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I don't really need Graves anymore. Um, Graves was there in case I maybe got like some early pirates. I was going to be able to just kind of stack the the gold by going early game pirates. But this is actually going to be really, really good for me. This, these guys are going to get destroyed. These guys are going to get absolutely obliterated. As you can see, Kassan gets knocked out of the frame. Zephyr comes into play. By the time he comes back down, uh, both of his team are uh, half health. And I just kind of just pop off. This is going to keep happening over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do is probably make... Chen, very very tanky he's going to be the front line he's going to be primarily the only tank i have in this team and i'm going to have a very very strong back line of maybe like assassins 
um, against sorcerers. I don't really know exactly yet. I've just been really, really lucky that I have a tier two uh, or a two star Kha'Zix and two star Kassadin already, not to mention nearly another. I might end up getting a three star Kha'Zix really, really early. Um, this is going really, really well. Huh. Yeah, so you can see obviously the strength of Sephir. I feel like Sephir, there's a couple of items in the game. I might make videos specifically on them, guys. Uh, and again, if you enjoy this this style of video, uh, comment below and let me know if you're enjoying this kind of TFT guide, um, kind of uh, brain picking 200 IQ play, yes, kind of scenario that I'm kind of talking through. Uh, I'll do more of these talking about different uh, mechanics, different synergies and why they work and why they don't work. You get more of a specific guide rather than just a full gameplay. I've been uploading full gameplays. They're winning this trade, guys. Specific oh, they might actually lose. And no. Nah, we lose. They had an extra person that, that time. So we're not you're not gonna win every single one. Um you're not gonna win every single one. Uh unless obviously you both have the same amount of, of creeps. Because if I'm knocking up one of his it doesn't matter because he's going to have three and I'm going to have three. So that's whenever Sephard has a little bit of a downfall. But usually mid to late game, you're going to have the same amount of creeps anyway. So that was just a little bit of a spanner thrown into the works. But if I want, I'm just going to get Kha'Zix. Give it to me. Give it to me, dude. I'm going to have a tier 3 Kha'Zix so early. Wow. But yeah, comment below um, A, how you're finding Teamfight Tactics. If you're finding it easy, hard, if you're enjoying it. And yeah, comment below if you want more of this type of video, guys. I'm loving Teamfight Tactics. I feel like I am uh, learning a lot by just playing a lot of games. I feel like that's how you get good at anything, by just doing it a lot. And uh, I'm learning some kind of crazy play styles, crazy synergies, which potentially some other content creators and even big streamers out there aren't abusing or aren't kind of talking about. So wait, every, everybody, oh my god, everybody has their own kind of take on certain things. And I honestly think items are potentially the be all and end all of a lot of early game fights, guys. And especially game fights. It is just RNG can make or break a game. But only if you know how to utilize the items. You can get items, okay? But you can put them on the complete wrong people. And they'll be useless, alright? They'll just be completely useless. So, like, obviously you're not going to be putting... I don't know. Like an Infinity Edge on a Garen. You're going to be putting that on somebody who's going to be utilizing it a lot more. You know, like a Draven or... Or even make it maybe an Assassin. You know, you just be a little bit smart of who you're placing uh, items on. But remember, items in TFT are different from playing League of Legends, guys. So Rabadans can go on potentially a virus or something like that. You know what I mean? It isn't just solely a Rabadans goes on a Vagar, all right? It's, it's not like that. But be wary of the certain items which are better for others. Oh my god, dude. We're going, we're going for an Assassin comp, guys. We're going on Assassin Comp. Why would we not go on Assassin Comp right now? Look at look at what we are being given. We're, get, we're being given Zeds. We're being given Pikes. This is insane. This is, we're going to win this easily. Watch this. Watch this engage. Look, Darius gets taken out of the mix. Two Kha'Zix is good in the back line. Constantly just decimating their, uh, just their, their general back line. Their, their two Yordles. And yeah, there we go. Easy peasy. Not a single person died. Just destroyed that guy. Give him a crazy amount of damage early game. And uh, you get another Kha'Zix. There we go, boys. There we go. We are level 5. And we have a 3-star Kha'Zix already. If I get any form of damage on him. Oh, this is awesome. This is going so good. Takes too long for the uh for I feel like they shouldn't make the creep rounds take so long to start. I feel like it makes sense whenever you're doing the uh the PvP, but waiting to kind of do the this kind of farming round, I don't think there should be as long uh, a countdown. But I guess yeah, it depends because maybe you're maybe not as focused on what you're buying. Because one thing I've noticed, guys, when I'm playing TFT, I you can get very, very kind of muddled up. You're like, I'm going for a void, I'm going for assassin, but there's just like 
There's a, a there's a draven on the board. Should I buy the draven? But then it's gonna knock me out of whack for what for what I'm kind of going for. I'm going for an assassin build. If I put a draven down, I'm not gonna have my assassin. If that's what you're going for, I feel like you should start a game with a focus. You can deviate from it, but as long as you come back to it in the end. All right, deviate from it, but come back to it in the end. I've been pretty lucky right now. I have a, a BF sword. I feel like BF sword is one of the strongest items uh, to potentially have drop. Um, again, it depends on what, what comp you're going. If you're going like a sorcerer comp, then maybe a BF sword isn't what you're going to potentially be wanting. Uh, oh, dude, Spear Sojin. Very strong item. I still stand by, like, comment below if you think there is an item stronger than Zephyr and tell me why. I don't think there's anything stronger than the ability to every single engage knock somebody in there. It's not a chance. It's a 100%. If it was a chance, it wouldn't be as strong. If it was, like, say, a 25% chance or, like, a 50% chance, it honestly wouldn't be that great. It would be, it would be okay. The fact that it's 100% of the time, you'll alienate a random person in their team it's real that like that alone is just insane think about it like this all right if i have a oh my god two more pikes if i have a level advantage right so i have one extra person on the board than them all right so say for example i'm five and i'm against somebody who is uh four so they're gonna have four people on the board and i'm gonna have five people on the board if I use Zephyr and engage, I'm going to have five people on the board. They're going to have access to three of their people or three of their champions during the, the first five seconds of a fight. And five people versus three, I'm going to nuke them down mega fast. All right. It doesn't happen all the time. But if I ever get a level, if I ever get a level advantage with a Zephyr, it does happen. And as you can see, like right now, right now as it stands, I'm not really going for any real synergies. I have a strong tank. I have a Sephir because I'm knocking uh, them up every time. So I'm alienating one of their potentially strongest champions. And uh, yeah, the, the, tier, the tier 3 assassin with stacked items. I feel like stacking items on one person is a lot stronger than kind of putting them around um, different people. It depends, again, on your, on your setup. But... If you have a tier 3 champion, you can pretty much make them a Super Saiyan God mode by just stacking items on them ASAP. Because if you maybe potentially, say I put some items on, I don't know, Pike for example, in this engage, maybe put like Spear Sojin on Pike instead. Obviously, I'm kind of splitting the risk and splitting the reward. But if Pike gets instigib, then he's completely useless. Do you know what I mean? It's very, very unlikely that my tier 3 is going to die first and then engage every single time. I'm going to win this again. Look at this. I did 666 damage with the... Uh, there we go. Look at the damage uh, my, my Kha'Zix is doing. Just, oh, it's, it's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. I don't need to go for another Kha'Zix, which is kind of good. That means I don't have to waste... Paracel. The only thing is, I'm on, on a bit of a win streak, so I'm always going to be last pick. I got 96, um, 96 health here, guys. So, and a carousel. Whenever you're going, whenever you're here right now, you can either do two things. All right, this is this is your thought process when you come to a carousel, guys. You're either going to try and get a synergy or an extra champion to get a tier two or a tier three. So you're either going to be going for a synergy, either going going to be going for a tier two or a tier three, you're either going to be going for an item. Or you're going for a champion you can sell to potentially uh, just get extra gold. So, obviously, the more uh, rare the champion is, the more gold you're going to get back. And whenever you do sell... Oh, my God. Whenever you do sell a, uh, a champion, you get the item to potentially put onto another person. So, take that in consideration whenever you are doing the carousel. Whenever you are first pick, last pick. And, uh, yeah. And also, take into consideration potentially... Um, if you can, it's a lot to take in. Take, take into consideration, if you can, the uh, people that you're playing against and what their matchups are. Because sometimes, if you sort of go, right, well, they need this champion. Like, later on in the game, you'll be more aware of this. Early game is not too crucial. But late game, you might sort of go, 
Oh, hey, he has a tier two, I don't know, pike. And he's, he, I can tell he needs one more pike. And if the carousel comes around, you can just steal his pike and then sell it and then potentially lock him out from getting his, his big, big power spike. And there we go, just decimating people again. Look at the damage. Am I going to ever get hit again by somebody? Wait till I, this, guys, again, this is, this is me without any synergies on the board right now, apart from Ninja. If I get a, a Void and an Assassin, things are going to get crazy. Things are going to get absolutely crazy. So I'll probably end up selling Brand. I don't know if I should maybe keep my, like, Kindred's a good kind of champion to have late game just because of, of their ultimate. We should win this easily. There we go. The Se every time, Sephir completely locking somebody out of the game. Dead's going in right afterwards here. Just He's not really doing any damage yet, but it's because Kassanen has his spell shield. Spell shield's done. And then Kha'Zix just comes in from the sidelines. He's like, yo, you having some trouble, Zed? Have one of these. Have one of these 666 isolation damage. Wild. Another pike. Don't mind if I do. Another pike. Don't mind if I freaking do, bro. The only thing is... I kind of made a little bit of a rookie error. I want to have Zed. But then if I put Zed down, I lose... I kind of made a little bit of a rookie mistake. If I put Zed down, I'm going to get the Assassin. Crit. Extra crit. But I'm going to lose the standard... Just one ninja. So you only ever get uh, the ninja synergy if you have one ninja down or four. You can either have all or one. Oh my god, that was so good. Oh, oh my god, we got three items. Holy, the RNG gods, guys. RNG gods. But again, like, this would make me having Zed in there as well as Shen would be really, really bad. Oh my god, Titanic Hydra, dude, this is sick. Would be really, really bad if I was solely playing and focusing on... Um, hmm, what should I go for? Another Shen. Yeah, if I was solely focusing on synergies, that'd be bad. All right, but right now, all I want is a really strong front line, which is just my Shen, and then my back line just jumps in every time. Look at this, look at my back line right now. Look at this. The power of a fed Kizix. Kizix, I saw somebody doing a tier list on Twitter the other day saying that Kizix was like D tier. I don't know what he was talking about. The isolation, the isolation damage Kizix can do is really, really strong. If he jumps to the back line, they only have like one or two casters. He can like click his fingers and he freaking disappear. It's so strong. So strong. I'm intrigued to see how much damage he actually does when I have the assassins down. Should we try it for one? We should maybe try it. Should we try it for one and just see if like what's better? Like, is the extra kind of attack damage from Shen? Is Shen, you know, Shen being that front line's pretty good, but then again, obviously having those three hyper fed assassins, uh, it's probably gonna make a big difference. I uh, Thor meal on Shen now as well, guys. Jesus. All right, this couldn't have went any better. The RNG gods. Yeah, I am on an absolute tear right now, guys. And are you watching every time? Like, what you're supposed to be taking from this video, guys, is the Sapphire. You're supposed to be taking the Sapphire from this video. It is in. It is literally. If you get it as early as I got it, level 3, level 4, it is literally an instant win. As long as you don't just... There needs to be a thought process in your buying. You know, I'm going for 3 stars. As long as you just get as many 3 stars as possible, maybe like 1 synergy, 2 synergies. Like I might grab a Cho'Gath here just to get the Void. But early game, try and play your best around items. 
be sensible whenever you're combining items. Make sure whenever you're putting them on certain champions again that there's a thaw process. Don't be putting a thorn meal on a Lulu. You know what I mean? Don't be putting a and like a frozen heart on a virus. You know, he's not gonna be right next to champions. He's gonna be on a he's gonna be a range champion. So I put a frozen heart on Kazix because he's jumping into the back line. So he should be like reducing their attack speed by just standing beside him. So if he's jumping at the back line, trying to attack like uh like a Tristana or Lucian or something or something like that, he's instantly reducing a lot of their damage done. So there's there's a thought process guys. This is going well. The thing is, I've done things like this before. And then they'll just get really creative. Oh my god. Yaz has a rabbit ants. Sometimes sometimes people don't notice things like that. There, that, never mind. That guy noticed. Alright. So right now, I don't know if I should maybe go for... I don't know if I should maybe just go for items again. Or try and just grab Parthus and sell him. Right. We, I just realized that we took uh, we took Darius specifically because he has a uh, a BF sword, and right now having such a high end um, assassin comp, it means that once we sell him, we are going to be slapping that onto potentially Pike. Mm, you will put on Pike maybe. Depends on how. We'll save it for now, but I'll probably throw it on Pike. Oh, I still want to swap out one. Mm. I was thinking about swapping out Pike or Kindred there. But I feel like having this backline is just so strong. Having those assassins down. Obviously, if I swap him out, I'm not going to lose the synergies because I already have three assassins. I don't think I can lose this. I feel like my item my item sets are just too strong. A thorn meal on a Shen as a front line. And one thing I've noticed a lot of people doing. A lot of people seem to be just um going too heavy front line. So maybe getting like a Garen. They're going like a brawler and the knight. They're maybe going like Darius, Garen, um who else? Darius, Garen, Cassidens kinda of tanky too. And then what happens is they have no actual burst damage. They have no sorcerer. They have no assassin. Remember, it's like an MMO, guys. Treat TFT the way you would league in MMO. You know, if you have a full assassin team and they have like a proper team comp, like a healer, um, you know, a tank jungle. It's it's not going to be that great late game. So the same goes early game. It might work for you, but I oh we might be getting no. We're fine. We're fine. The rabbit on Yaz is. Uh, this didn't work, guys. Oh. Oh. Oh, dude. Oh. Oh, we're fine. Or Dude, that's actually an insane comp. That's like a knock-up comp. It's like a knock-up comp. You got the Gnar knockback. You got the Yaz windwall knock-up. Or a whirlwind knock-up. Then you have the Lulu, Lulu knock up, and then you can kind of chain that together. If, if I didn't have such a high burst, if I maybe didn't have items on Kha'Zix, that was actually kind of cool to watch. I like it. I like it. And guys, I'm trying to be as informative as, as much as I can uh, in this. So just because you see like a brown there, just because you see something which is pink or purple, doesn't mean you need to buy it, all right? Just just because it's it looks cool, it looks alluring. It's not going to fit into your team comp, and uh, it's expensive. And uh, yeah, like it's don't remember, don't deviate from the original plan unless it's worth it. Am I getting more items? Am I going to get another item? Ah, only one item this time. All right, I feel like I feel like we can. Wait, what is it? What does it be? Absorbed on a tear make? Oh wait, a spear sojin, dude. Double spear. Two spears, one game. 
yeah, keep keep keeping an eye on um, who the Sapphire knocks up every single team fight because it can it can knock up potentially the weakest person or it can potentially knock up the best person. So uh, that is the RNG of Sapphire itself. All right, let's see. She's gonna knock up. The knock up Lucian, that'll be good. Knock up Sujuani, still pretty good. They have no tank. I was just to go in. Three people are dead pretty much by the time she even engages. Oh wow, we, we might lose this. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. All right, I was close though. I was by Katarina. We only have one Katarina down, so we're probably never actually going to get, at this stage of the game, another couple of Katarinas. So we're better just trying to get, like we have two, two star Zeds. We need one more Zed to make him into a, uh, a tier three. So Kata's just down there right now for me personally, guys, so I can optim optimize the uh, the fact that I have one ninja. So let's see, let's see who Zephyr knocks up again. Zephyr knocks up their strongest champion. Look, look at that, guys. Zephyr just knocked up their strongest champion. Their kindred is insane. Oh, wow. Not enough, though. Boom. Boom. There we go, dude. Guys, I just. Zephyr literally just won, won me that engage. It, it literally won me that engage. Their kindred was their best. They had three items, three really good items for kindred. Oh, another pike, dude. So close. I need one more pike and one more Zed. Wait, do you see the RNG gods have been so good so far? But I'll, like, I'm getting another Kha'Zix. I already have a three-star Kha'Zix. One, two, three. Knock up Mordekaiser. He was their three-star. I was just to run in. Chop up the back line. We, we might lose this. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Look at their Tristana. Oh, my God. We might lose. Dude, their Tristana has Hurricane and, and a double Ginzus. The only way I think we're going to beat this dude. Oh, damn. I think the only way we're going to beat this dude is by Sapphire. I'm going to go for MF. I think. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to go for Swain. And then potentially sell Swain. Never mind. This guy just took Swain. I guess we'll just go and get the the BF sword. Yeah. All right. Well, let's grab the BF sword. Yeah. I think the only way we're going to win this is if Zephyr knocks up Tristana. Tristana having two Ginzus and a Hurricane is potentially unbeatable. I don't know. I'll, I'll be so I'll be so mad if we've gotten this far and we get beaten by just that one stupid comp. Tier three pike though, boys. Alright, got three assassins done. I kind of want to get that void damage done. Oh, here we go. Please knock up Kindred again. This guy just lost the RNG Lotto twice. The Kindred just got absolutely obliterated. He didn't even get to use his ult. Oh my god, Kindred didn't even use his ultimate. Oh wait, we're getting owned. What just happened? Alright, well I think we need to get a void done. Right, I might just buy Rek'Sai. I'm just going to get Rek'Sai, throw him down. We got the Void Assassin build. 
Again, I stand by and say this. I feel like Void Assassin is the strongest comp you can actually do in this game. I feel like it's just too, too insane. In fact, we have a Sapphire. We have a, t we have a tier 3 or th th uh, pimped out 3 star Kha'Zix. Come on, please, please, Sapphire Tristana. Oh, it's Sapphire Mor Mordekaiser again. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Here we go. The thing is, how much HP does he have? Hmm, he has like half my HP. What if, from now on, I just keep spamming by by XP? So I potentially, oh dude, Jogoth, MF. What if I just keep spamming by XP? To potentially have an extra player on the board. Hmm, I might... I might sell Kindred. I feel like Kindred with this comp just isn't really working. I'm not going to get another... Hmm. Remember, the longer a game goes on as well, guys. The longer a game goes on then the less likely you are to actually get a tier 1 or a, like a lower level champion. So getting like a Gar and a Kha'Zix and stuff is very, very rare later in the game. The longer the game goes on, the higher quality and a more expensive units become. That could be good. Having a Zix could play really, really well in the Assassin comp. Hmm. I'm tempted to swap out MF or Kindred. We'll do it. MF's ultimate's really strong, guys. I haven't really seen Kindred doing a really good ultimate in a while. So I'm starting to think Kindred's actually not that good of a champion. This guy should get knocked out really easily. Oh, dude, that was a nice. That was. Oh, dude, Pike is doing some work. There we go, dude. M MF. This comp's really strong. This is gonna be tight. This is gonna be really tight. Oh. That might be the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Getting a tier to Chogoth. He's potentially made our team comp. A lot stronger than it than it was. Like signet the fact that we have a Zeke's and a Chugath for the next time we fight the dude who we got obliterated by. Oh my god though. The thing is, Draven with a double bloodthirster and a static shiv actually doesn't I'm not afraid of it because I have such a oh my god. Here we go. Oh my god, we're doing it. We're doing it. Brilliant. That was awesome. Assassins obliterate. That's what I was saying about, uh, about Draven. Assassins, it doesn't really matter if they have like a hyper-fed carry. If I can just get my assassins to jump to the back line. My tier 3 Kha'Zix, my tier 3 Pike are just going to two-shot the Draven, two-shot the uh, um, the Tristana or Vien or whoever you have. The guy, I honestly feel like Gunslingers aren't good in my, in my eyes because so many people are playing Assassins and because Assassins are so strong. Oh, wow. We got Draven. 
They get driven. One crit's all I need. There we go. 727. And there we go, guys. Sapphire. That's all you need. That's all you need. I can hear your laughter coming waves across the shore. Oh, maybe you could find my car.